Today's podcast is a little bit different. We're going to be diving into a question, and Emily is actually the one who received a phone call regarding this. So I'm going to turn it over to her. I have a second job and where I work, we receive, you know, phone calls and questions about, you know, people's animals and stuff like that. And one night I got a phone call uh, about someone asking what band size to get for their Jack donkey. And I was a little puzzled. I was like, um, you're not supposed to band donkeys or horses. You can only band cattle. And even then you have to be careful. I was like, um, and I don't really think that that donkey would really like you doing that either. Um, but they're just completely just adamant about like, you know, what size band do I need? Can I use the ones that I have it here? And I was like, you don't do that. I was like, if you band your donkey, it's going to just cause a whole bunch of swelling. I was like, it could get infected. I was like, and you know, you couldn't lose your donkey from that, but whether or not they actually listened to me, I have no idea. They seemed pretty dead set on versus taking it to a vet. Emily brought this question to me and um, it's really horrifying. And I thought we need to do a podcast on the situation and bring our expert veterinarians in to explain why this should never be done. So um, I have Dr. Lydia and Dr. Gina here. So I'm gonna turn it over to them. They are our full-time staff veterinarians here at our facility, treating hundreds of animals. And we've definitely seen, seen a thing or two here with animal care and, and some strange cases coming into us. Thankfully, we haven't gotten a donkey that had a band on it. But um, so what do you ladies think of Emily's uh, question that she received? Well, we were taught in vet school that banding is only for calves that are three weeks or less. And it is not an appropriate means of castrating any kind of equine species, um, breed, whatever. Um, so donkeys, it would not be an acceptable means of castrating them. Ever, ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, but what Emily said was right. It will cause significant swelling. It will cause necrosis of some tissues, but donkeys are so well vascularized. And I think on the... Horse Heroes episodes, Dr. Lydia said that a lot, and Doc has said that a lot. So they're at risk of bleeding out if you don't get a really good um, ligation of that vasculature, and banding would not be appropriate for that. They would be at risk of bleeding out, getting sepsis, peritonitis, all sorts of stuff. And it's just really painful, especially in adult donkeys, for sure. And, and, and horses as well. Um, yes. Fortunately, <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, I've, I've heard people say, I'll just ban the dog. Um, in an area where there's not a lot of veterinarian care, people kind of just start making their own ideas. And that's why we're doing this podcast to hopefully educate people that you should not do some of the things that you might see on the internet. Now, Dr. Lady, I know that you kind of did some research on the internet and is this question asked a lot? I did after Emily and Tani posed the question, go on the internet and I was shocked and horrified. I should have a better idea that people try to perform surgery on their own pets, but I don't think people recognize how intense an equine castration is, whether it's for a horse or for a donkey, even a very young horse, it's a complicated surgery and not to make things about humans, but 50% of the human population are male. Picture the level of pain that would be involved from devitalizing an organ by cutting off the blood supply. Um, people think, oh, this is quick and easy might be quick and easy to place a band, but in most cases it takes weeks to months for the part of the body that's been banded to actually get to the point where it dies and falls off. Um, it is considered acceptable to band like one to three day old sheep, tiny, tiny baby sheep. Um, and I know that the cattle industry also considers it acceptable only for very young calves. I think the cutoff point is under nine weeks. And even then um, there is significant pain um, and, and infections and complications associated with that. And I think 
any of the cattle producers I know don't band. They use a different form of castration that involves cutting, even though you might have some hemorrhage, you know, the, the amount of pain for that animal is, is much abbreviated. So for horses, um, Dr. Gina and I do a lot of equine castration. I still get nervous after 10 years of being a veterinarian. It is a big, stressful surgery. We perform the surgery under general anesthesia. So our patient is asleep on the ground. And then in addition to general anesthesia, we are doing local blocks. So we're injecting lidocaine into parts of the testicle that have innervation because even under general anesthesia, our patients still have a pain response to a surgically performed castration. So take that level of innervation and pain and potential bleeding and then put a band on it and just throw that animal out in a field and you are asking for a disaster. Um, donkeys are tough, so some of them might survive, but I would say their risk of getting a severe life-threatening medical complication is very high. So in addition to just straight up inappropriate animal welfare, no one should ever be banding a dog or any kind of horse species out there, period, end of story. So it was kind of shocking for you to research this and see how many questions are on the internet about this. Now you went into some different horse forms and stuff and this, this question's asked a lot. Yeah. I, and, and I had no idea it would be controversial. It seems so like such a face palm moment to me. Like why would anyone consider doing that to their own animal? Uh, even a, even a food animal that does, that's not a pet that isn't owned you have a vested interest in keeping that animal healthy and comfortable, even if its job isn't to provide companionship, even if its job is to just gain weight and become food. Um, there's a reason why certain industries don't allow it over a certain age. And it's because it causes so much pain that it causes that animal not to do well. Right. So taking our feelings out of it, it's inappropriate from a welfare standpoint. So yeah, I'm just, I'm shocked. Thankfully, I haven't personally seen this in practice in 10 years. I've never encountered it, but we do have a lot of known complications from castration, including scrotal hernias or inguinal hernias, which is when the body wall is weak. Um, and sometimes we have a loop of small intestine. We very recently um, did surgery on a horse that had a loop of small intestine um, that was discovered during a castration. He did great, thankfully, but we had two veterinarians in a sterile situation to deal with that. Um, they and he can was very young too. Very yeah. young. Yeah. Not a lot of blood supply. So obviously this goes without saying, but the older an animal gets, the larger the size of their testicles and those testicular arteries and vessels are much bigger. Um, and arteries, veins, and nerves run together. The older we get, the more of those areas are innervated and the greater the pain and risk associated with castration is. So if you think of the colt that you'll uh, castrated and he had the hernia and somebody's like, well, I'm going to band this, this colt while he's little, but so like the band will actually fit. And what would have happened from a medical perspective if that intestine had gotten looped in there? So you know, like this, this whole thing is on education. We don't want people out there doing this, but I think it's important for them to know the consequences because they could be like, oh, I've got the band on properly. We're good. Cause he could also still act like a stallion if that, that the hernia wasn't there, but from the hernia perspective, and then just if, if a stallion isn't gelded properly, they will still act like a stallion. Yeah. Oh, if that, if somebody had banded junior with, his GI tract and his scrotum, he would have had necrosis of that GI tract and he would have had to either be put down or he would have gotten so sick he might have passed on his own. Yeah. He was out in the pasture and nobody was watching him, which would be a very horrible, painful, terrible death. Yeah. Severe colic, sepsis, multi systemic organ failure, and death. Like, he would have really had horrible way to go. A a block like he couldn't he couldn't pass through like and this is why it's so important for everyone to take your horse your animal to a veterinarian uh it's really frustrating in tennessee that legally people can castrate their own horses their own animals is the way the law is written uh so i mean anyone could actually just go 
tie their dog down on a table at this point and castrate it, which is just horrifying. Um, horrifying. Yeah. It, it, I, I just, it leaves me speechless. I'm like, how? But this law was put in back in the 60s and it's just very antiquated. Um, yeah. Now, if somebody was like, I'm going to disregard everything and I'm going to ban this, this stallion or this colt while it's still young, um, because the, the bands are only for like, you know, sheep and really small animals, young, young calves or something. So if somebody was to do this with a horse and they were successfully able to, to band the colt, he could still act like a stallion. So uh, I think part of what's confusing to me about people even suggesting this is anatomy. And if you look at the scrotal anatomy of a sheep or a cow, I guess we're talking about scrotum. So here we go. <laughs> um, it's much more like a elongated sack with an easy to feel central area, right? And in horses, we don't have a single area. We're making two separate surgical incisions. And in young horses, it can be very challenging, even under general anesthesia, to even locate those testicles. Um, even if we're waiting until nine to 12 months of age, we're not talking easy to find right. hanging down their anatomy. So if you didn't have the ability to put your animal under general anesthesia, I think your chances of grabbing something that was not actually a testicle are pretty high. Um, and also, um, there's a term called cryptorchidism. Tani's mentioned a testicle being left in the abdomen. It's not super common, but we do see it where one or both testicles doesn't descend appropriately and stays inside the abdomen. So from the outside of those animals, they look like a gelding, but they're actually still a stallion. And that's a major concern for multiple reasons. Um, one really obvious one is that testicle is still going to produce testosterone. And so that animal is still going to be capable of producing offspring and have those hormone fueled behaviors um, that can be very dangerous for that animal to be around others. But we also know that testicles aren't supposed to be in an abdomen. There's a reason why they're outside the body and the change in temperature can stimulate the production of abnormal cells. So in, in dogs and other species that have an intra abdominal testicle, when they're not supposed to, there's a higher incidence of, of cancer related to that retained testicle. So we don't want to leave those in. Um, and, and going into the equine abdomen is incredibly complicated. I would never do it as a general practitioner. Um, I fixed like little tiny hernias in babies and stuff like that. But that is a referral institution at a, you know, a gold standard equine hospital that has um, the ability to do abdominal surgery. So it's a big deal. Um, I don't know why you would ever, I guess people would think that maybe they were saving money by trying to ban their own horse and they, they're not like your animal could end up dead. And if your animal doesn't end up dead and you care enough to call a veterinarian, then we're left dealing with a mangled mess of partially necrotic tissue and abnormal anatomy. And then we have to try to figure out how to fix something that would have been very straightforward for us from the beginning. And then once you go ahead and try to treat your own animal, it's always more complicated for your vet coming behind you. So yeah. Wow. We need more education out there on why this is inappropriate. And there's been a lot more advances in um, understanding and teaching about pain management yeah. for veterinarians to give to our patients. And I just, I can't imagine. Yeah. Doing that without pain management. Yes. And this is not a criticism of no. like the, the, the cattle industry, I think does things very well. And there are lay people who yeah. do an excellent job castrating very young beef cattle and sheep farmers, you know, there yeah. are industry standards in place and those standards generally do a good job. And in most cases on those bigger farms, those producers want to do an excellent job yeah. because that is how their businesses function. So this is not an across the board criticism of appropriately trained professionals right. in a context, you know, banding appropriate species of animals, it is never, ever, 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 ever appropriate to ban any canine or any equine species for castration. It is inhumane. 
And I think you summed it up right there. It's, it's really just, um, it's shocking. I think the things that we run into as rescuers and, you know, you all doing shelter medicine, things that you would think wouldn't even be a question or, you know, it's like, how, how did this even come across somebody's mind? And I think it's, you know, just all comes back down to that. If you have an animal, you need a veterinarian and you shouldn't be trying to do things on your own um, without that guidance. And I think the Tennessee um, law is very frustrating about castrating your own animal it, or it says your regular employee can castrate your own animal for you. It doesn't say your trained employee, you know, like, like you were saying, somebody needs to be trained in this. It's just, if you're a regular employee, yeah. you can, you can do this. And that's, animals need help. Animals need uh, advocates to be able to speak for them. And I think so much of the reality of what animals go through is they just, they're kind of swept under a rug in a lot of aspects, which leads to a lot of abuse and banding a donkey or a horse. It would be just a horrific thing for that animal. But also you got to think of like the human safety of this. Yeah. Like I cannot imagine trying to get up under a donkey with a, a huge rubber band and this, this weird little machine and trying to get that. I mean, you could get one testicle and then, I mean, not be able to get the other one or, I mean, you get kicked in the head. It just, it's a very dangerous situation. Yeah. Kind of defies all logic and common sense just all the way through. Yes. So I think the takeaway from this, if you're watching this is, uh, well, don't use a uh, bander for castrating horses, dogs, donkeys, you know, just baby, baby goats, baby sheep. They're very young, baby calves that are very young, but still consult with your veterinarian. Make sure it's appropriate. And Always ask questions. Uh, yes, yes. And um, yeah, definitely don't be calling up your local feed store asking for a band to do your donkey um, Horse Plus Humane Society offers gelding grants uh, to help with financial assistance. You don't have to try to to do something on your own. I think um, our veterinarians brought out, you know, you could lose your animal. Like yeah. if you value your animal, you know, we, we put tons of feed money into our animals. You think of all the money that goes into your animal. You had to purchase the animal. You have to feed the animal and you're willing to go purchase a $10 bander with some sturdy rubber bands and you're ultimately willing to risk your animal's life over that and potentially spend thousands of dollars in vet bills or just have the veterinarian come out i mean castration operations i i know some places is like 90 dollars uh for the castration operation you can spend you can spend more depending on where you're at um you could easily be 250 but horse plus does offer grants to cover that um expense but work with your veterinarian do not go and for your own safety as well don't just don't do it please that's don't ever mind you asking questions right. right we're never gonna jump on jump down somebody's throat and and criticize them our job is to advocate for your animals and keep them healthy and well so you know if somebody out there is listens to this and is like oh my gosh i put a band on my donkey three days ago um you know there are things that you can do to help or if you just really truly don't know please do not google things oh my goodness there's a lot out there that is not correct call a vet clinic even if you don't know the vet there call and be like hey i have a question um all of us are crazy busy so probably it'll take a day or two for somebody to call you back but there are vets out there lots of us who are happy to help even if we don't have a pre-existing relationship with you um email horse plus we'll answer your questions but um it's our job to make sure you have the information that you need to care for your animal appropriately yeah. there's lots of resources out there there are ag extensions yeah. teaching hospitals your local clinic us yeah yeah and don't don't call up a, a like a feed store feed supply company and expect their employee to give you expert advice um like emily at the beginning of this podcast you know she's she's answering the phone and there's some, I mean, she thankfully has horse experience, but a lot of these employees that they hire, I mean, it could be straight out of high school, not having any 
animal experience, you, you really need to talk with the veterinarians, talk to the experts. If you do have a question on a, uh, a medical type question, you can uh, comment in the questions and we might be able to do a podcast answering your question in the future. So uh, feel free to do that. But I just want to thank you, uh, lovely ladies, for um, your expertise. I know you've got a very busy, busy day uh, ahead of you scheduled at Horse Plus. Do you want to kind of just run down what your schedule is? Because I know in staff meeting, I heard it and I was like, <laughs> you're going to be busy. Well, you got a list there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> usually we, um, usually I am optimistic about what we're going to get through, but we've got, um, Ooh, we have four animals that need castration, four horses. Um, we have a dog to spay. We have a lot of recheck blood work. Um, we have four or five lameness exams. We have two eye surgeries. Um, so the eye surgeries so are, I think a lot of people don't realize what eye surgeries are. So what is the eye surgery part of? Oh, part? well, actually, in this case, um, neither one of them are full enucleations, but... <clears throat> Usually the surgery we're performing on eyes here is in a nucleation, which is removing not just the globe itself, but all of the periocular tissues. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. And some vets are very fast. I do it under standing sedation and do nerve blocks. So the animal is actually standing and um, it usually takes me between one and three hours, depending. So it's a pretty, pretty intense one. So obviously we're not going to get through this whole list today, but um, we had some horses that we had to suture up that need rechecks today. And we had a horse with a corneal ulcer that needs to be rechecked. So, um, got a lot of, got a lot of different things. Our assistants were awesome this morning. I gave them a list and they went and pulled blood and they've got, um, recheck blood work running. So when Dr. Gina and I jump off this call, we just will grab those results and interpret them and then we'll make a plan. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining this podcast and answering this question. I really hope it saves a lot of suffering potentially that could have happened to donkeys and horses or dogs or anything like that. Um, but work with your veterinarian. Don't, don't just Google it and see if it works because your animal will suffer if you're experimenting. Um, so thank you so much. I'll let you uh, get, get to, on to your busy day. And again, if you have um, comments or a question, you can put them in uh, the comments of this video and we might just do a podcast on it. So thank you so much.